it looks like Big Time Bex was no match for Big Time Sasha. Or Big Match Sasha, I guess I should say. Hello everyone and welcome to this Smackdown review. This Smackdown was a two and a half hour special super sized Smackdown. This occurred due to AEW's Tony Khan challenging Smackdown to a war. Now obviously I've got obviously I am not interested in any kind of war. I just want to enjoy wrestling. So, I'm not here to talk about that. You guys know the details. We started off with Edge. We started off with Edge. And more importantly, I just want to say, Super Size Smackdown, I thought was very, very good. It was a fantastic show. There are obviously a couple of negatives. There are obviously a couple of negatives, but I thought mostly throughout the most of the show, I thought it was very, very good. I still think it was a fantastic addition and definitely an episode you should really go back watching if you're really in. If, I really think this is an episode you can definitely revisit, especially the main event, Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. It's definitely a match that I know people will definitely go back and watch a 30 minute main event match with no ads that is what you call a masterpiece and that's what i'm going to be calling this match but i'll talk more about that when we get to it we started off with edge he promises to scar seth rollins soul inside hell in a cell if you guys know me i'm not a fan of edge it's, it is what it is with his promos. It's his typical promos whenever he is serious. But anyway, then we had Finn Balor versus Sami Zayn, King of the Ring semi-finals. Finn Balor and Sami Zayn would put on an absolute incredible match. They would, have, they would actually have a really good match. You see, people like to shit on Sami Zayn's character, but if you ignore the character-wise... He is still a fantastic wrestler. He is still a fantastic wrestler. He and Finn Balor had a really good match. And in the end, Finn Balor would win because, well, we kind of knew he would because we know we know Sami Zayn's history with Saudi Arabia. We know his history of Saudi Arabia, that he doesn't like going there. And then we get Naomi and Sonya Deville. Now, I said last week... That I knew Sonya Deville was not going to get physical. Well, te well, she did get physical in the match, but we knew it wasn't going to be a straight-up singles match. Sonya Deville made it a handicap match, and she's now got her new lapdog. She's now got her very own lapdog, and that lapdog is Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler would assist. Sonya Deville in a beatdown on Naomi. Naomi would fight back, but in the end, obviously, Sonya Deville and Shayna Baszler would take the victory. Obviously, Shayna Baszler, obviously, Sonya Deville is a coward. She is scared. She is afraid of Naomi. If she was not afraid, if she was not scared, she would have faced Naomi one on one, woman to woman. Fair match. But clearly her hiring Shayna Baszler as her little lapdog, her little bodyguard, her little protector, definitely tells me she is a coward. And Bailey said it best on her social media. She called Sonya Deville a coward and called and called her and Shayna Baszler idiots. And I agree. And she ain't wrong either. Now, this does fit the story. I'm not going to sit here and shit on it, even though I think it is kind of obvious. We all knew this was going to happen. Now, storyline-wise, this does make sense for Sonya Deville to do this. She isn't just going to just willingly give Naomi her one-on-one -on -one match. We all, we all know storyline-wise this makes sense. I'm just hoping in the end Naomi defeats... 
Sonya Deville. I don't care about age. I don't care if Sonya needs to be elevated. She doesn't need to be elevated at all. She is an authority figure. She is an official. She doesn't need any elevation. Naomi needs to end up winning this whole feud. It's really all I'm trying to say. If this is building up Naomi as the next big, as, as one as one of the next big baby faces on SmackDown, then I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Seth Rollins says Hell in a Cell is where Edge's story will end. I unfortunately do not see that happening. I pretty much see Seth Rollins losing. Edge is going to win the feud. Even though Edge and Seth are both on Raw, you know, I do think this feud does need to end inside Hell in a Cell. Then we had Carmella and Zelina Vega in a singles matchup. This was a Queen's Crown Tournament match. These two are friends... And Zelina Vega promises Carmella that she would not punch her in the face. She doesn't need the mask. So Carmella proceeds to not worry about the mask because her friend won't punch her in the face. However, some friend Carmella is, instead of Zelina Vega, the one that gets hit in... Instead of Carmella being the one that gets hit in the face... Carmella super kicks Zelina Vega in her face, which leads to blood coming down Zelina Vega's teeth. Carmella begs her, begs her off and apologizes for kicking her in the face as a force of habit. And then Zelina Vega proceeds to punch Carmella in the face. And this is where Carmella runs out of the ring and proceeds to go get her mask. But then Liv Morgan comes, takes the mask, and Carmella is afraid. Zelina Vega rolls up Carmella and takes the pinfall victory. Poor Zelina Vega, if she's just going to be another body for Shayna Baszler to destroy, because I know Shayna Baszler is going to beat Dewdrop on Raw. We had another boring. Happy Corbin segment. Please get this off my TV. I do not care about happy talk. Get this shit off my TV. Please. I, am not, I do not want to hear any ridiculous, not funny jokes from Riddick Moss. These jokes that these jokes are not even funny. They're not. Absolutely zero funniness whatsoever. Then we had the Street Profits face the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. We all knew. We all knew. We, don't lie to me. You, we, all knew the, we all knew the Street Profits had a 0% chance of winning this match. The match was good. The match was really good. Not going to lie. The match was really good. But we all knew the Street Profits were not winning because they're moving over to Raw. Usos would win and retain, as we all expected. And then came the main event. Match main event. Roman and Brock were the main event. The final match on the show was Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. In my opinion, this was a very masterful match. I really did enjoy this. A masterpiece of a match. Becky Lynch was being portrayed as the heel here, while Sasha Banks was being portrayed as the babyface, because... Heel versus heel, you've got to have one play in the other role here. Bianca Blair was at ringside. The match was very good. I really did enjoy it. And Sasha had her moments with the Meteora. Bank statement on the outside. Very close, close pin attempts. But Bianca Blair would interfere and give Sasha Banks the assist when Sasha Banks delivers a backstabber to the man and pins Becky Lynch. For the first time in three years, this was Becky Lynch's first defeat. For the, this was her first singles loss for the first time in three years. Now, obviously, throughout most of the most of the three years, she was sitting at home looking after her baby. 
but it is still a big record to talk about. It, it is still a big accomplishment for Sasha Banks. So that was really cool. A masterful main event, a masterful match. And this is now where Becky Lynch is most likely going to retain at Crown Jewel. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns were the main events. They had a really quick contract signing. This was probably the first contract signing that didn't end in disaster. But Brock Lesnar would sign the contract and he would tell Roman Reigns that he already looked over the contract with his agent Paul Heyman. So continuing to stir the pot on where Paul Heyman's allegiance is. I think Paul Heyman is going to assist Roman Reigns in the victory at Crown Jewel. I don't see Paul Heyman turning on Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is not going to be losing his Universal Championship in Saudi Arabia. He is not going to be losing that Universal Championship. Not until WrestleMania next year. So anyway, that is all I've got for you guys. That is all I've got for you guys for this SmackDown. And uh, it was a very good show. I really did enjoy this episode of SmackDown. Outside of the few negatives... I still think it's a good show that you can sit down and watch. Especially the main event between Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. Thank you so much for joining me for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit that thumbs up and comment your opinions down below. Subscribe and if subscribe as well. And I will see you all next time.